Do you ever go to bed thinking, why am I not better at Fortnite, even though I put in hours consistently? Is it a lack of talent, willingness to improve, or is it simply something I don't know? In today's video, I'll give you some of the answers you've been looking for, because fact of the matter is that some things are super hard to understand, unless somebody tells it directly to your face. So without yapping too much, let's get into that. The first reason you're bad is that you aim for the head when spraying. What I'm specifically referring to here is when you're fighting and get into a box and use either your AR or SMG to try to eliminate the opponent. If you aim for the head in this scenario, you will on average deal way less damage than someone who always aims for the chest. The Fortnite chest hitbox is 9 times bigger than the head hitbox, effectively making it 9 times easier to not miss shots when spraying at the chest. And not missing shots, especially when you're in a box in an aim duel, is a must if you ever want to become a solid player. There are no exceptions to this rule. Even if you have the best scores on Kovacs and you're considered the best aimer in the world, you'll still perform worse if you aim for the head, rather than the chest when in a box. So if you've been trying to track the head, stop doing that right now and I can guarantee that you will see more success. Another ultra common thing that keeps people bad at Fortnite is that they go backwards when shooting their pump. Going backwards from the opponent you're fighting is for many a habit, but this habit is keeping you bad, as when you're fighting close range with a shotgun, it is crucial that you have the guts to move forward when you're shooting your shot. Not only will you come across as more confident to the player you're fighting, but you'll also deal way more damage. In addition to these benefits, it's also super easy to do great peaks from close to a wall. Of course, this takes some practice, but after you've put in the initial hours and struggles that you'll face in the beginning of adapting to this playstyle, it will feel totally natural and you'll be a better player because of it. The mentality you want to have is that your opponent should shoot you when you're far away from him and you should be able to shoot at him when you're close. Movement is something people very often neglect, but it is one of the most important aspects of the game. And if you want to consistently do well, you got to understand it, practice it, and master it. And more of an awareness-based topic, we have the fact that bad players never try to deal counter damage, or in other words, tunnel vision and healing as soon as they're low on HP. A ton of players nowadays build a ton of boxes, waste all their mats, and don't look for opportunities at all because they're too worried about getting a mini or two off. If you want to almost instantly become better, you need to slow down when you're low on HP and still play so that you can take any opportunity your opponent gives you to get a free shot off. Not punishing the mistakes your enemy makes, whether you're on 10 HP or 200 HP, is a massive flaw in many players' game. And if this sounds like you, you absolutely need to get it sorted. On a little bit of the same note, we have taking too long to finish fights. Some players that seemingly have everything needed Needed to be insane, I'm talking great mechanics and solid aim, sometimes hesitate in finishing fights when they're given the opportunity because of the fact that it seems like a high risk. Every player that plays at a high level, gets good placements and make good money from the game, have the ability to finish fights when they're given the chance. If they see an opening to jump in a box where they're more likely to win than not, they take it without hesitating, a skill that the majority of aspiring pro players lack. Next up, we have the bad player classic, editing without looking at the opponent through the edit. This tip is one of the best and most applicable tips in this video. When you're editing a wall, whether it be a right hand peek or an open edit, look at the opponent behind the wall and not at your edit. A lot of low tier players look at the edit menu when performing all kinds of edits. This is not how you should play the game if you want to reach a high level. Your edits should always naturally happen whilst you're able to have 100% full awareness for the opponent you're fighting. This is also the easiest way to spot out mistakes in anyone you might be playing against. Naturally. This applies for all kinds of edits, wall edits, double edit downs, stair edits, whatever edit it may be. You need to be good enough mechanically to not have to look at the edit menu to perform whatever edit you're thinking about. If you don't have that skill set yet, then I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but your mechanics aren't good. The level of your intuition is very important if you want to become a great player. So when practicing, it is key to trust that. A sad thing I very often see when I'm browsing Twitch is players playing Sonors not taking great opportunities because their duo is telling them to chill. I understand the importance if you're playing for something or it's a tournament, but if you have a play your intuition tells you is good, you should take it, regardless if your friend is telling you to chill or not. Because if you don't consistently listen to your intuition when pracking, it's going to be really hard to do it when you're playing things that actually matter, like tournaments. It's also always the good players who go for high risk, high reward plays when playing creative, ranked, whatever it may be. Players who remain bad, play safe, and don't challenge themselves by going for plays they normally don't. Mad switching is knowing when to use the different 
different kind of materials when building. And a lot of people don't understand the importance of this skill. Mat switching is especially important in endgames, but it's also extremely important to understand it when taking mid-game fights in tournaments. Very often when I'm watching mid-tier players, they use metal in their mid-game fights. This is bizarrely stupid, given that it's so hard to refarm it. You need to have the confidence to stay away from your metal when taking these fights and exclusively use brick. Of course, if you run out of all of your brick, then you need to use metal. But if you run out of all of your brick, then you're probably terrible at dealing counter damage like we talked about earlier. So you'll need to practice that rather than mad switching. In endgames, it's way easier. In boxes, you'll stay in for a prolonged period of time. You use brick or metal. When rotating from one box to the other and you need to build, you use wood. Learning this will make you a way more consistent player. Yet another super common thing I see in players that are bad is that they only play one thing. For example, creative build fights. Now, don't get me wrong. These players are insane when they have unlimited mats. Their builds and edits are top tier, and they know how to clip players better than tier 1 pros. However, when it comes to actual games, they look like floppers, because their skill set is ultra one-sided. In order to not be bad, there are three fundamentals you need to master to a high extent. Aim, mechanics, and game sense. Aim and mechanics are both easily improvable by playing creative. Game sense, on the other side, is developed through playing customs and tournaments. Ranked gives you a better understanding of how to play on more realistic servers than creative, in that it's worse ping and worse FPS than the vast majority of creative maps. Ranked also helps you play against players with hundreds of different strengths and weaknesses, which means that by playing ranked, you'll understand what kind of players you find easy to fight and what kind of players you find hard to fight. Now, that was just a lightning fast introduction to what skills you develop through the different game modes, but there are subcategory upon subcategory that you can practice and get better at outside of mechanics, aim, and game sense too. But the essence is that balance is a must if you don't want to be bad. Talking about not being bad, a common thing I've seen from every pro player I've ever met is that they get mad like really mad at themselves. A stark contrast to the hundreds of thousands that don't blame themselves, but everybody else. I think this has a lot to do with what kind of environment you've grown up with, maybe even coupled with a bit of genetics. For some people, it is very easy to blame others, and sometimes even rightfully so. But the sad reality is that you can only, to a very, very limited extent, control what others are doing, like your duo. So wasting your energy and focus on blaming them is pointless, when you can blame yourself and consistently get improvement from your shortcomings in creative ranked in tournaments. Understanding priorities is important in Fortnite, but for some reason, the majority of players don't know the number one priority in fights. Simply, not ever, even for a millisecond, losing track of your opponent. The only fundamental you always must practice upon when fighting is having full awareness over the guy you're in a fight with. And for some reason, this is very hard to understand for a lot of people. A lot of players think they have to do triple edits, mongrel classics, and try to predict exactly exactly where the guy they're against is going to be in 15 seconds. And honestly, most players just make it really hard for themselves. From now on, and in every single match you play moving forward, mentally think, I must keep track of my opponent when you're fighting. When playing aggressively, this is way easier than defensively. So when you're the guy applying pressure, you especially should never lose track of your opponent. And if you do, you have some room for improvement. Another department that people have a lot of room for improvement in is their patience game. Tempo switching is a skill that must be mastered. And and it's basically being able to go from playing extremely slow to extremely fast when needed. A lot of people have the mentality that they have to make a play if a fight takes too long. Naturally, finishing fights quickly is always better, but sometimes you simply need to be patient. For example, if you're playing versus a really good player, you can't make any mistakes, and therefore, patience must be prioritized. Another super common example of impatience of ruining people's tournaments is when they're playing off spawn. Off spawn fights are best to finish up early, but if you can't do that, then waiting for the right opportunity is crucial if you want to consistently win. Now, moving on to another reason so many players never get good, we have not been able to do things nobody else can. In Fortnite, everyone and their grandmother have good mechanics. Everyone has an okay level of aim, and most players nowadays can fight to a pretty high extent. If you want to stand out as a player, you need to have some attributes that are super hard to replicate. Players like Tayson, Queezy, and Buga all have top tier strategies, coupled with thousands of hours of high tier customs practice that makes them unique. 
players like Vreet has played an unhealthy amount of Stone Wars against the other best fighters in the world. And the likes of Seri and Kami also have top tier strategies, but also undeniably have the best communication out of any team in the world. Your job, if you want to play at the top, is to find out exactly how you can do something nobody else will be able to replicate. Or, at the very least, develop a skill set that is insanely hard to copy. Whether that be from scrimming against tier 1 and 2 players every day for a year straight, playing creative against the best fighters in the world, or becoming more structured than any other player who has ever played the game. To give you another pointer on how you can develop a unique skill set, I have to talk about quality practice. Spending some time before you hop on thinking about what you should play for maximum improvement on any given day will ensure that what you play on a day-to-day -day basis will maximize your improvement process. A lot of people don't think about the quality of the things they play, which is stupid, given that your time of the game becomes at least twice as effective if you simply give it a thought here and there. In scenarios where you're inconsistent mechanically, taking a few days and just grinding sonors 2v2s or 3v3s will be a great use of your time. If your mechanics are insane but your aim isn't, then playing some zero build FFA in creative will be a better bet for you. Find your weaknesses and lock in on improving them. This way, you'll ensure quality practice. On the same topic, I need to mention warming up. But not for the exact reason you might think. Warming up is incredibly important because of the fact that without warming up, you'll make mistakes you normally wouldn't make. Therefore, you'll get a playstyle that isn't true to your actual strengths and weaknesses. A simple warm-up can be just doing some free building, practicing a few scuffed edits here and there, and doing some 200 pump FFA or another FFA of some kind. It doesn't have to be difficult at all, and you can actually make your warm-up super fun if you find the right maps. I'll leave some good ones in the description below. Talking about strengths and weaknesses, it's important that that you adapt a mindset that you're going to play to your strengths when playing important events like tourneys and to your weaknesses when practicing. One thing I see super often is talented players wasting their competitive potential because they play to practice in tournaments too. And this can be okay if you need to get better at a very particular thing. But when you're actually good at the game, you should have a game plan around just playing to your strengths when playing cups. If you're really good at playing endgames, you should exclusively play for endgame, other than the first game, of course. If you're good at fighting, you should have a more fighting heavy playstyle in all of your games, and so forth, to get the drill. Someone who does not get the drill is the guy who doesn't understand reps. Going from bad to good all comes down to how many repetitions of play you get. To emphasize the importance of understanding reps, let me give you an example. Player A plays ranked for one hour every day. He w keys and is able to fight 30 players in one hour. He does not get any ranked progress. Player B also plays ranked for one hour every day. He plays passive and only fights three players in one hour. However, he gets gets good placements and gets good ranked progress. Who do you think improves more at the game, player A or player B? The answer is of course player A, getting 10 times as many fights as player B in the same time period. Understanding that you can get a ton of practice of limited time will make your practice way more effective. Don't play for stupid ranked progress, play for improvement, because at the end of the day, that's all that matters in a game like Fortnite. Looking like a good player does not mean you are one, and caring about looking good is something that keeps a ton of players bad, even when they have the potential to get super impressive tournament results and consistently win games in whatever mode they're playing. Good players do not care about how they look when playing. They care about getting the job done. And if that has to be done by looking like a 55 year old player, then so be it. They care about performing regardless of how. And if you can adapt this mentality, you'll be a much better player because of that. Next up, we gotta talk about friend groups. And one thing I've seen more and more recently has been friend groups calling others lucky. For example, if someone consistently wins a game in the solo victory cash Cup, a friend group might call that guy lucky instead of understanding that that player is good and does something right. And when you're in a friend group like this, it is so easy to get the same mentality like the others in there. But this can cause you to forever stay bad at the game. Good players would look at this guy who consistently wins games and think, what is he doing that I'm not? Being able to be humble and understand that you have something to learn is incredibly important if you want to get good at this game. Because when you do something time and time again, it isn't luck. It's skill. Aim is incredibly important in Fortnite, probably the most important skill to master. And this game is designed to reward calm aim. Calm aim is simply being smooth when tracking, shooting your shotgun, or sniping. Not having calm aim and practicing upon trying to be flicky and fast will ensure that your improvement will not be as effective as it can. Always playing and having the thought that you need to have calm aim whilst you're putting in the hours will be the best way to develop a high tier playstyle. Although it might not look as cool as a flicky and fast one. The best way to go about developing Kame 
aim on mouse and keyboard is having a light grip on your mouse when practicing. Flicky and inconsistent aim can often be caused by a hard mouse grip. The amount of pressure you put on your mouse can never be the same, but if you have a light grip, it will be way easier to consistently replicate almost the same amount of pressure. If you're not already practicing upon calm aim consistently when playing creative, ranked, and tournaments, start today, because it will help you become much better than you can imagine. On a more a practical note, something that keeps thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of players bad, is FPS drops. And for some reason, nobody talks about how it's often caused by your radiator being filled with dust. Your radiator, if you're not aware, is the most important component in any liquid-cooled computer. And this right here is a dust magnet. If your radiator has a ton of dust in it, it will cause your CPU temps to be unstable and therefore lead to FPS spikes that will make the game way, way harder than it has to be. To clean your radiator, begin by turning off your PC. Then uninstall the AIO cooler and get a can of compressed air. It's important that your compressed air is not too wet as that could damage the components. But I've personally never had any problems even though my compressed air has been a tiny bit wet. Follow all of this by going over your radiator with your can of compressed air and thoroughly cleaning out any dust. Chances are your radiator will have tons of dust, so make sure you're patient when cleaning. Then when things are looking good, you can give your fans a little clean as well, and then you can reinstall the AIO cooler and turn your PC back on. I strongly recommend searching up a dedicated video on how to properly clean your radiator if it's really bad, because in that case, compressed air won't do the job. But for the majority of you guys watching, the compressed air in itself will make your performance more consistent.